Thank you very much, Sheep Dogs. Back here with you for another 30 minutes. Tim and Sid, big game south of the border tonight. Alabama Clemson will play in the national championship game again. We will discuss it a little later on. And Nick Kiprios will join us momentarily to get you set for the night in the NHL. Five games on the schedule, three Canadian teams in action. Let us begin, Sydney. With the Preds and the Leafs. Michael Hutchinson, Timmy, thank you. We'll get the start in Toronto. Leafs host the Preds. Hutchinson made 28 saves in a shutout over the Canucks on Saturday. After a six game losing streak, Preds have won three of four. And they're expected to have Philip Forsberg back in the lineup tonight. He's missed 17 games with an upper body injury. Uh, the Habs host the Wild tonight, looking to snap an eight game losing streak against Minnesota. Claude Julien making some changes. Joel Armia. To the top line, Max Domi and Jonathan Drew, and of course, Carey Price will get the start in goal for Montreal. And the Flames wrap up their four-game road trip at Chicago. Calgary have won two of three on the trip so far and are tied with Vegas for top spot, not only in the Pacific, but the Western Conference. Johnny Goudreau has 11 points in his last four. That's right, 11 points in his last four games. Yep. Wow. That's why he's the first star of the week. Better believe it, Pontiac. Sorry about the Pontiac line. It's just a thing I say when I'm shocked. Doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> Nick Kiprios always makes sense. Joining us from the mothership in downtown Toronto. Kipper, good to see you, man. How you how you doing? Good. We're ready to go here. Ready? We got David Amber beside me, hardest working host in hockey. Well, yes. Well, he's, not, he's harder harder working than I am because I am lazy generally. <laughs> um, Kipper, let's start. Do you want to start with Connor McDavid? That's why you don't host hockey. That's why I don't host <laughs> hockey. Uh, the Connor McDavid getting uh, feels good altercations and not being stuck up for kind of thing yeah. is, is is hot well, in Edmonton. Your take. First of all, uh, it's not a suspendable hit. No. You guys found it suspendable. No, I agree no, with you. It might have been a penalty though. Yeah, it's not suspendable. All right, but. You know, that's two guys fighting hard for the puck, and it's not like McDavid didn't know he was there. He actually initiates the contact first, and then watch Lindholm's uh, mask go up. He kind of cuffs him a little bit. So at that point, you're, you're fighting for your space. Um, the bigger picture in all of this, I get, is, is where's the league going? Edmonton got called out Saturday night by us first on Hockey Night in Canada in terms of their lack of response against L.A. Much better against Anaheim, but let's see where it is from game to game when you're, when you're not necessarily called out by your head coach um, after an embarrassing loss. But the bigger picture, I guess, where you guys are going and everybody else in social media is, is the league doing enough for their star players, correct? Right. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. And so what do you think? I th I'm okay with where it's going right now. Listen. You don't think that they're targets right now? Nick? Yes, they yeah. are. Yeah. But, but if I was playing, I would target them too. So then how, how, do, you, how do you resolve the issue? Because I feel like the NHL is having their cake and eating it too, where yeah. you're not allowing guys, there's an instigator rule, a guy can't come over and just punch someone in the face when you feel like your star player has been wrong. Yeah. Or are the See, star players just going to have to buck up and I'm, deal with it. I'm, I'm not a big, Tim, I'm not a big fan of the instigator rule, but I think that sometimes players hide behind that a little bit too much. Right. And, yeah, you can still go and challenge a guy, and you can go talk to him, and you can try to intimidate him, or you can go after uh, other star players. There's a lot of things that you can do outside of that instigator rule. Just to sit there and hold your hands up and say, hey, listen, uh, uh, hey, hey, Connor, I'm sorry, but the league isn't really allowing me is just hogwash. Um, the problem is, boys, is our league has never been softer, okay? It's never been easier to go after these star players. You want to sit in a meeting two hours before with the head coach, and w what's the first thing you talk about? Getting into the face of the guys that can hurt you the most. That's Connor McDavid. That's Goodrow in Calgary. That's all the star players. The whole principle of your meeting two hours before the game is to slow those guys down. So it's expected now from the star players that you are going to have guys in your face. And then every once in a while, maybe even a star player will take liberty on another star player. And Drew Doughty has got this in him. So now the response I would have had Saturday night is, okay, Cassian and, and Lucic, why don't you go talk to Carter and, and Drew Doughty? Don't go after their fourth line, guys. That's completely useless. But, again, if I played in this league, 
it would never be easier for me to go and, and rattle the, 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 the cages of, of the star players. So then Sid mentioned earlier, and he's bang on here, in the NFL you can't touch a quarterback. Sid, uh, Nick, you're, you're enough of a sports fan. You know they don't touch those star quarterbacks, and if they do, there's a flag. Yeah. In the NBA, LeBron James gets every call that he wants yeah. because he's the star. Does the NHL need to do more to protect their stars as opposed to a guy on the ice? Yeah, but not to the point, Tim, where you got to change the rules. And it's pretty clear from the NHL is that the 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 how about just calling the, the rules are there to protect all players, not just a certain amount. And you know, egregious yeah. is a word that we've used a lot the last few years. And and there has to be something egregious when it comes to uh, an attack on star players. And if it's there, we know that most often than not, not only will you get suspended, you'll get actually more games if you do go after uh, someone that gets a lot of attention. So after that, though. Um, I think we're really flirting for, uh, with fire if we're going to sit there and make it so obvious like the NFL has that where you even breathe on a star quarterback and you're going to get suspended. I, I don't want to see the league go in that direction. That's but an interesting counter. Just in, and considering we're running the video here, Kipper, great job with Elias Pettersson over the weekend. I know you talked to him Friday. Uh, great interview there between you. you and he. Uh, I'm going to stay in Alberta for just a second yes. here. We talked Oilers. The Calgary Flames... Uh, when you look at that team right now tied for top spot in the West, Kipper, and the trade deadline is, a, is getting closer and closer with each passing day, what do they need before night one of the postseason if you're Brad Treliving? And, and again, he's moved a lot of assets recently. I don't know what he has left to move that he's comfortable with. Yeah. But when you look at their roster, you, you think they still could use blank. Secondary scoring outside the big line, maybe. Yeah. Um, I think if if uh, if Lindholm wasn't so darn good, he would have maybe fallen into a, a second secondary position <laughs> yeah. on the second line. But they've been so good together, you're going to leave them. Um, if I'm tree living, though, I'm I'm very careful of not upsetting the chemistry any more than uh, he did in, in the off season. And and what a trade it turned out to be. Getting, getting Lindholm and Hannafin. So outside of that, I, I, I just hope that, um, you know, the goaltending kind of takes care of itself and, and Riddick has done an unbelievable job and I, I, we all believe that it's his job to lose from here on end. Um, and if that continues to kind of trend where it is, I, I don't know if they're going to do a whole heck of a lot here. Uh, Calgary, uh, we got Nashville against Toronto tonight. And Winnipeg, you look at those three teams and you're sitting there going, man, one team's going to be real disappointed maybe as early as the second round. But the, 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 it's, going to be, it's going to be a dogfight to get out of the Western Conference. Yeah, it's almost, I was going to ask you, as, as you have the Predators and the Leafs tonight, if we could see an all-Canadian Western Conference final. Of course, Nashville will have a say. But the way it's shaping up, it almost seems like Calgary has a bit of an advantage given on the division that they play in. Yeah, listen, uh, you know, you'd certainly like to see a couple upsets early while, while you continue to make progress, and hopefully that'll be Calgary's uh, way. Would, would Winnipeg and, and, and Nashville get together again and have one eliminate the other? I mean, yeah. that's, that's a great case scenario. But regardless, you got to just look after yourself. And, and now Goudreau has now put himself into conversations about a heart trophy. This is new to him down the stretch in, in terms of now – carrying a hockey club and the good news he's got a great supporting cast around him but make no mistake much like Mitch Marner in the first half of the season that, that that's the engine on, on the Calgary Flames. Uh, Kipper Leafs and Preds tonight regionally on Sports in Ontario first big move for Kyle Dubas this offseason John Tavares mm -hmm. the uh, when Nylander wasn't going to sign right away the second big move you could argue who the backup was going to be Garrett Sparks yeah. is his guy Garrett Sparks he has history with. Do you see anything that could transpire over the next little while change that? An another strong performance from Hutchison tonight, or, or is the cement dry no. on if Dubas is running this team, yeah. Garrett Sparks is number two? <laughs> well, it depends if you ask Dubas or Babcock, I think, <laughs> that question. Um, I, I would think that Hutchison can get himself in there and, and, and really steal the backup job if he continues to, to progress here. Maybe uh, Babcock would look at his experience a little bit more uh, down the stretch 
um, but he's going to have to remain awfully good and awfully consistent here. It wasn't that long ago, boys. He was in a dogfight with Hellebuck in, in Winnipeg for that number Correct. one job. Yeah. And then it kind of went south a little bit, and then it completely derailed in Florida. And you only get, I know he's 28 years old, but you only get so many cracks at, at uh, saving your career. And this could be it for Hutchinson if, if he doesn't make this thing work. Um, but I really believe that uh, a couple of consistent performances uh, would certainly make Babcock think twice about uh, who he'd want uh, on the bench just in case uh, Anderson goes down again. I'm kind of projecting out the West, and as I look at the East, all of a sudden the Penguins are starting to play the way we know the Penguins can play. Boston Bruins have won four in a row, and Tampa Bay has been unbelievable up until a loss uh, this weekend. Are the Tampa Bay Lightning the team to beat, or do you worry about their history in the postseason? I don't know if we're at the point now where rosters are so locked in that we can really even say anybody's... Uh, you know, in that position. Certainly they look good, uh, but much like Washington of the last few years, you look at them and you're sitting there going, well, their window should have been a couple of years ago and maybe it's passed, but that's not necessarily the case anymore in the National Hockey League. Uh, yeah. They're as good as anybody. Um, sometimes you, you can find areas in the regular season where you're actually better um, <laughs> at a halfway point or a three quarters point than you are when it matters the most in, in April and May. So certainly they, they, they look strong and Vasilevsky when he's on he's great and like any other goalie when you're off he he didn't look very good you know the other night but um, they're, they're, they're fairly deep and it starts on the blue line and I think if we look overall in the National Hockey League we look at Nashville's defense and go wow and and Tampa Bay's isn't that far off um, but they may have another move or two moving forward and I think David Poyle may have another move or two um, moving forward as well so Boston you mentioned Boston there they, they still have to um, replace uh, uh, Rick Nash and his his spot and his money uh, they haven't done that yet they've got a move to go here so it's it's still wide open maybe that's the best part they call it, people call it parody you know um, some people call it mediocrity but <laughs> We'll, we'll see where it shapes up when it's all said and done. Yeah, let's go with parody. Okay. Uh, that's a good PR <laughs> word. Uh, again, Sports in Ontario, if you're watching in there, uh, Leafs and Preds tonight, Kipper and everyone's getting ready for that. We have Flyers and Blues on Sportsnet, Sportsnet 1. Who's starting goal for the Flyers tonight? I don't know. <laughs> Sportsnet West, regional restrictions apply, Flames and Blackhawks. Then uh, the late game tonight, Kings and Sharks on Sportsnet 1 and Sportsnet Busy Hockey Night. Kipper, great stuff. Thanks for the time, man. Great. Have a great night watching.